Um, so just to close, uh, again, I tell you all this out of personal testimony, but God experiences will always line up with biblical precedents. So that's how I can share these things with confidence. Um, and I also say they're not this open heaven reality that I'm talking about that Jesus, I want to say, Jesus is the one that said, you will see heaven open. So I'm not, this isn't like a new thought. This isn't a new teaching. Jesus has said it, so I'm repeating it. It's not bound to one spot. He said, you will see angels ascend and descend on the Son of Man. So open heavens go where Jesus goes. You have to be the one to invite Jesus into that time and into that space. And the more time that you cultivate and the more you dedicate that space, I'm telling you, like you will start to see these dynamics appear in your life. Um, that's me and Jen's life. We just, this is just what we live now. We recognize this is just it. So we go, we come here to the prayer room, experience the open heaven. We go home, we experience the open heaven. We go wherever, we experience the open heaven. All these things, all these metrics, because we're, when they happen, we're like, oh, oh, favor. No, well, that's, that's because God is, you know, oh, angelic. Oh, okay, well, that's, that's that open heaven. That's that tunnel that Jesus talked about. You'll see him ascend and descend. Um, the open heavens, it affects the atmosphere. I promise you. It'll change your house. It'll wreck your house in the best way possible. I'm telling you right now, and this is crazy, that I was at Grist on Tuesday. Grist is, here's my little plug for Grist, a great little mm -hmm. corner store over here. The best meatball sub you will ever have and the best desserts, period. They're amazing. But I was over there and I'm standing in line waiting to get coffee and, and bread, oh, focaccia bread. There's my plug. Focaccia bread is amazing. Anyways, um, and I'm like, this place feels really good. Mm. Wow, this place feels like the prayer room. I, this place, and God's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, could, I get like, in my, in my spirit, he's going, uh-huh. Do you get it? Do you get it now? Yeah? But I'm like, oh. It's affecting the atmosphere. And God doesn't, God so loved the world, guys. He, he's not, he's not like exclusive. Like the open heavens, guys, it is an evangelistic tool that will draw people in and be, they'll be like, oh, wow, this space is really feels nice. Yeah, of course it does. You need to get in it. You need to know <laughs> the Lord. You need to feel it. And so I'm happy that Grist is experiencing the open heavens that we're contending for. I hope that Spaghetti Warehouse experiences it. <laughs> I, I, that was just an inside joke. Um, they have great sourdough bread, I love it. <laughs> I, I only say that because we have to look at it at, like yeah. all spread out around the trash can. Yeah. It's gross. And that brings me to my last point. <laughs> the beauty of the kingdom, the open heavens, they will inspire us guys to bring beauty, bring the beauty of heaven to earth. And so I'm just gonna end it with this. The other day I was thinking about this dynamic and I was walking from our parking lot over here. I saw those dumpsters and I was like, oh God, that's so ugly. And he's like, yeah, it is. You need to make it beautiful. I don't want to do that, God. That's the same. He's like, no, no. My beauty should inspire beauty to come to the earth. So I'm going to propose to us as a community that we have a cleanup day. That we wear the nastiest clothes possible, and we wear really thick leather gloves, and we get masks and glasses and shovels and paper, and not paper bags. That'd be gross. Uh, big black bags, and we clean up that dumpster area because if we're talking about beautiful things, we need to be the proponents of bringing the beauty of heaven to earth. So that's my pitch. <laughs> and so I'll be the first one to sign up. I'll make sure that you guys know what time and date. And it will not be mandatory. But we're going to do that. Because that is what God would do.
And if we're going to talk about living in an open heaven, we have to also uh, sometimes put on our gloves and clean up other people's dirty stuff. So um, that's what I got. So God, uh, we just give ourselves unto you and into the knowledge and the depths of knowing you further, knowing you more, greater. God, I pray we need it. We need the open heavens. We have to have it. If Jesus, if you said you will see the open heavens, then that's what I'm asking for. I want to see them. And I, I just ask, Lord, that these measures that, that you've shown for this ministry, um, I just pray, increase them, Lord. Increase the angelic activity. Increase the prophetic. Increase the peace. Increase our joy. Increase our awe and our wonder. Increase the miraculous provision and favor. And increase, God, the idea that we are never alone. We are never alone. Never outnumbered. Never surrounded. When we stand in the gaze of God in the, in the openings of heaven. And Lord, we need strength because we do this for, for ourselves. We do it for our friends and our family here, God, and we do it on behalf of a city that doesn't even understand or know, but we still do it, God. We want to hold tight to this calling, that we want to make a space where you feel comfortable, that you feel good just to move and do what you need to do, and people just get a, a chance to respond to that. So help us, Lord. Holy Spirit, increase the power, the dunamis power inside of us so that we can continue to walk in these things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.